Today I'm back with my contrabass trombone and I'm back with it uh, because of a Facebook post that was asking whether this Chinese made contrabass trombone works any better with a proper mouthpiece. Now if this video sounds a little bit uh, rank it's probably because it's quite windy here today you know it's Wellington it's always windy um, but this is about the quietest time weather wise that I've got so I thought I'd take advantage of that and make this video. In addition to giving you a demo with the mouthpiece that comes with this contrabass trombone I'm also going to give you a bit of a demonstration with this mouthpiece here. This is a Denniswick size 3 tuba mouthpiece. Now you may have noticed the insulation tape on here this is just so that it fits into the mouthpiece receiver here. Um, without that insulation tape it wouldn't fit and it's just going to rattle around and result in test that's got very little musical value in it. But I'm also going to take it one step further and put this 0AL Denniswick uh, bass trombone mouthpiece in here. This is the largest bass trombone mouthpiece that I own and it's I think one of the lar largest bass trombone mouthpieces you can get. It's an absolute whopper of a mouthpiece um, and it does some funny things to my bass trombone playing. Um, so I'm going to give these three mouthpieces a demo and uh, show you guys the results that I get. Firstly, with the standard mouthpiece. That's just playing at a uh, at a comfortable volume. I'll now try playing a little bit quieter. And a bit louder. Of course, those dynamics have a little musical value, but I want to be reasonably thorough. That's about as low as I can get on one of these. So uh, that is with the standard uh, contrabass trombone mouthpiece. I will now uh, demonstrate what results we get with this Dennis Wick mouthpiece. So I've got about the same range, I can get that low um, pedal A, I can't really get any lower than that, but that's the same result as what I get with the mouthpiece that comes with this instrument. Now I'll see what I can do up high. And loudly. It's a lot more difficult to get those lower notes uh, when you're playing really loudly, but at the volumes that you're going to be using this, it's actually, uh, now that I've done this a couple of times, it's actually a lot easier to find the center of notes when uh, I use this Dennis Wick mouthpiece. Uh, I tried this experiment first a couple of days ago, um, but I wasn't able to record anything uh, because my neighbors were playing some music that interfered with the recording. But it's possibly a good thing that I didn't because the results that I got that day sort of suggested that there wasn't too much of a difference between the two. But now that I've done a little bit of practice with this, um, I actually find there is quite a substantial difference. I can now play most notes without sort of slipping off them and sliding around all over the shop. Anyway, the last comparison that I'm going to make is with this uh, Denniswick 
Zero AL bass trombone mouthpiece. So you sort of lose the bottom of your range. Um, the notes are sounding, to me at least, a lot thinner. Um, the mouthpiece really does feel too small for this instrument. Um, but again, I'll do some quieter stuff. Note production is a lot more difficult, uh, it sounds a lot more crass um, and generally not very pleasant. So it seems that we have a little bit of a winner with this Dennis Wick uh, 3 tuba mouthpiece. Now undoubtedly um, it would be nice to have a range of tuba mouthpieces to demonstrate with but unfortunately that's not a luxury I have available to me. But I'm genuinely a little bit surprised and quite pleased the result that I'm getting uh, with this uh, mouthpiece. Now this natively fits an E flat tuba or an E flat bass as we would call it in the brass band. Um, and I'm re yeah, I'm, as I said, I'm reasonably happy with this. <laughs> And that same phrase with the uh, no-name mouthpiece that comes with this. And the first variation with this proper tuba mouthpiece. <laughs> And finally, the first variation with this crap no name mouthpiece that comes with the trombone. <laughs>
So just some final observations. Um, I'm not sure whether the microphone that I'm using to record this is going to work too well. I say microphone, um, uh, it's actually built into my camera. I've got two cameras recording this video. One is there and one is there. So I'm going to listen to both and whichever one produces the best audio and sort of ignores the fact that the rain's falling on my roof um, is the one that I'll use. An observation that uh, I have noticed is that this mouthpiece, the, the no-name one that came with this instrument, um, it feels a bigger mouthpiece. This mouthpiece creates a bigger sound. I'm not really sure if it's necessarily bigger, but it's a louder sound. Um, I'm, most like, I'm most likely going to have to adjust the audio levels and so forth on this video, so that may not come through. Um, but it does produce a louder sound. It is a sound that's a whole lot less certain. I'm not as confident about hitting notes as what I was when I used the Dennis Wick mouthpiece. But anyway, I created this video uh, as a result of a question somebody asked on Facebook. So hopefully this video serves to answer your question. Thanks very much.